Welcome to the Afterthoughts Podcast, your go-to news media outlet, <laughs> where we are breaking news on the election today. I turned my TV on last night, and it turns out it was the election. Last night? Can you believe it? Yeah. For what? What kind of election? For the about? U.S. President, wow. Senate, House, all kinds of Seriously, things. Seriously. I was watching Office reruns. Issues. I had no idea that was last yeah, night. Yeah, it was last Dude. night. And mm. so uh, we, I believe, are the first... Uh, in the world to confirm or announce that Donald Trump won the election. Okay. Uh, the mm -hmm. Electoral College votes 270 plus, continuing to it go. Was, I don't know. It was at least 270. At least 270. Had I think some states are still undecided, but Ryan is going to project winners for all of the undecided states. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and call those. Today. <laughs> Just call them. <laughs> At the end of this episode, yeah. we'll go through the map and I'll tell you who won. We also want to Ryan has a system. Yes. He has an algorithm in his brain. And most yeah. importantly, I have the authority to make these calls. <laughs> he has been given the authority to make the calls. <laughs> and so he's going to be doing that. We also have, in a few minutes, a huge update uh, yeah. announcement that uh -huh. we are making today. Some breaking news. Oh, yeah. This Some is break, a, big deal. a breaking announcement. We're not going to bury the lead, but we will for a few world, minutes. But we'll bury it for a few minutes. A <laughs> couple minutes of bearing. And I'm saying it on here before I actually tell my wife about it. So yeah. did you tell Steph? I have not. Okay. This announcement, by the way, is going to significantly change. Big change. A lot. That it's going to bring to all of our lives here. Mm -hmm. um, let's just do a quick around the horn and everyone just say who you voted for. <laughs> Kayla, you go first. <laughs> Questions for Kayla. Who I actually want to for? talk about that today. Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm. No one would say, like, no one will say who they voted for in this world for the right. most part, which right. kind of speaks to the problem of how much identity is now rooted in politics mm -hmm. and how you, if you vote for one person or the other, you get assumed to like 10 different agendas mm -hmm. that you probably don't agree with all of them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what it was like to vote and prepare for this election for you guys. And I want to yeah. start with today. Some people woke up and they're excited and happy and they wanted Trump to win. And so they feel like, okay, this is great. Mm -hmm. Some people woke up on the other, other end of the spectrum that are upset, mm -hmm. didn't see it going this way, didn't want it to go this way. And how you would speak to both of those audiences and how you go about this as an individual person in light of a, a world changing event. Mm -hmm. A lot of things will be affected by this. There's going to yep. be so much opinion. And how do you take a deep breath and nice. keep walking? Yep. You want to do that now? Please. I'll start. Okay. Please I got go. a thought. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to remember there's always two stories happening. There's more than that. But for simplicity, there's two stories there's the collective story and the individual story. Mm -hmm. Both are important and both matter. But the collective story is what's happening for, let's say, for our nation. The individual story is what is happening for you. And so last night was a big night um, that changed a lot of things for the collective story. And half of the people listening are probably happy about the results and half the people listening are probably upset uh, about the results. Um, but specifically to the, the ones who are uh, upset about it, let me say your individual story still matters and always matters mm. and controlling what you can control is incredibly important especially if you woke up feeling pretty bummed th this morning i think the deep breath comes from going okay but i'm still here and i've got breath in my lungs and god has a, a plan for me and a purpose for me and i'm going to today like i do every day focus on controlling what I can control mm -hmm. and having the most positive influence in the arenas that I can have the most positive influence on. And I say that because I think one of the things that happens, and the, I think the media is to blame for a lot of this, and we can get into that, oh, is yeah. they're going to to try to convince you to, to um, spend all of your time being outraged about the collective story, mm -hmm. and you're going to spend too much time doing that and not enough time controlling what you can control. And so what I would say is the deep breath has to come from going, okay, the collective story is happening. It's always changing. Mm -hmm. There's always things happening at a at a big nation level and, and everything moves as it goes. But you have a story that you are telling. And so what world do you want to build today? What story do you want to tell today? And I, I always tell people to start there. That's a really good point. I love the personal agency. Personal yeah. agency. Control what you can control. Yeah. And, and in a weird way, Sometimes it, when there's a greater story happening around you that doesn't go the way that you want, yeah. you can respond a few different ways. One of those ways is, is just anger and bitterness and more apathy because you look around at the world and you go, well, it's all going in this direction anyway. So sort of that meaningless Solomon and Ecclesiastes, what's the point? Everything is meaningless. So why even try? But there's another response 
that I see a lot of people take when there's a greater story happening around them that doesn't go the way they want. Mm. They, in, in some ways, they realize, okay, I'm no longer going to rely on the government or um, a party or the story around me to create the life that I want for myself. So I'm actually going to, something in me wakes up and mm -hmm. I'm going to take agency and I'm going to create that life. Good. Starting from everything today that I can do mm -hmm. and big decisions that maybe I feel now motivated to make nice. that I wouldn't have been motivated to make had this gone my way. Nice. You know what I mean? So I love the idea of, of individual agency yeah. and focusing on that story. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Yes, that's really well said. Yeah. Individual agency. Very good. I think both of your responses were adequate. Okay. okay. Thank you. How would how can we take them from good to great, Ethan? Um, well, I'm going to take this from good to great. Go. <laughs> Maybe you are today feeling upset mm, or hopeless yeah. because you didn't want Trump to win. Or maybe you're feeling good and in the future you're hopeful that great things are to come. Wherever you fall, we have an announcement to give you some hope. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Looking forward to the future. <laughs> Babe. I was going to tell you about this. <laughs> yes. We'll talk later. It's breaking news to even the people closest to. This is going to affect you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Significantly. Go okay. ahead and say it, Doug, and I'll show the camera. Uh, Wekin Min Matat 2028. <laughs> Everybody is talking about this. Doug and I are officially going to run for the presidency. Oh, Every news station the next is now, election. it's like they're four years ahead of us right now. They're not even talking about wow. what just happened last night. I know. it's So this is about to obviously go viral and mm -hmm. kind of probably overshadow the, this election, yeah. 2024 election. 2024 is kind news. of old news. Yeah. So we're going to run. Yeah. We're declaring that today. <laughs> Ryan, can this you give us- This is the election that will change the course of yes, history. This is the yeah. one that really matters. This one right can here. Can you, mm -hmm. uh, because of the authority that- has been placed on your right, shoulders. Right. Can you give an early projection of which states we've already won? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll talk about Arizona for 24 at the end of this episode. Um, yeah. But you guys have actually already won it for Ari 28. Arizona's going to yeah. still be counting Doug votes. Because Doug loves Scottsdale. <laughs> yeah. Arizona's going to still be counting votes from 24. Yeah. Yeah. In 28, we need to talk about that, by too. the way. We need to talk about they the technology. They can't figure out a better yeah. system. Yeah, but you said something about me loving Scottsdale. Yeah, you And do. just for the record, that's true. Oh, yeah. I love You're going, Scottsdale. So, so breaking news, yes. on the record today, Doug Weckenman is saying, and this put this on the bottom line ticker, yeah. I love Arizona. <laughs> yes, I love Scottsdale. I'm making a definitive statement, guys. Wow. People are like, Doug, what do you believe? Dude, Camelback Tell us what you Mountain. Believe. I believe in Scottsdale. Yeah, <laughs> the okay. weather, desert golf, Camelback Mountain. Good restaurant. Are you kidding me? Yes. How uh, how are we going to do in our native state of Colorado, where we hail from? Not as good. Really? In Colorado. Surprise. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why is that? I'll show you the whole breakdown after this. I have born a little... and raised there. Yeah. Well, We're Joe Biden buffs. lost. Uh, I guess, no, he didn't four years ago, but Kamala, I know, lost Lackawanna County. And that's where she's where from? Where Scranton is. Uh, Biden's from. Oh. Biden is from Scranton. Uh, because a prophet is... like those two kind of... A prophet is without them. honor in their own hometown. Oh. Did you not know that, Kayla? So, oh. yeah. That's why mm -hmm. uh, you guys wow. are going to struggle in Colorado, okay. but you'll make up for it in Arizona. Okay. And so um, we're struggle in because <laughs> a prophet is without honor. Wow. Uh, we, we Incredible. Had, we had a conversation with... Our political correspondent AJ Norman, right. yes, a while back, and Doug and I were talking about politics. She's in that world, and so we were asking her questions. And then we were like, "What if like just normal people ran? <laughs> what if we just ran and like, had, like very a, average guys? How do I can't <laughs> emphasize the average enough? <laughs> average Plain in every way. Joe's very <laughs> average, and we not too great, not too great, <laughs> but yeah. not, not bad. <laughs> we could we could be worse, always." I will go on the record and yeah. say that. <laughs> That's a great so tagline, like, actually. <laughs> we could be worse. We could be worse, but we're not. <laughs> that could win in today's Welcome world. Welcome to the top. You um, could be worse. And so she was like, yeah, let's do it. She's our campaign manager. And so then she showed up a few days later and actually had made these shirts, which yeah. was very funny. Yeah, that but is very I, funny. But we are going to run. So I don't know what our next step is from here. There's emails coming in of people requesting <laughs> yeah. those shirts right now. Yeah. We see you. Did you guys sign I'm, up? I'm signing these shirts election. and sending them out right now. Yeah, I think there's a form we probably have yeah. to fill out. Or Make like sure an you fill that out. But I, I'd like to apply for the presidency. We would yes. like to run in 2028. How do you do that? Yeah, it's probably just an online form. 
<laughs> Honestly, it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> so much of this probably. stuff that you think is like real high tech and then you find out it's just not. Well, the good news for you guys is I have authority to to <laughs> sign off on that too. Well, I'm hoping that you're going to project a win for us well, overall. Once I see your application, then I'll decide. <laughs> you already then didn't give know. us our home state. Yeah. Colorado. Well, you're one out of two. What about Texas? That's a ton of electoral votes. Texas and we are is, living here. Texas is up in the air. How many Jeez. electoral votes do you know? Is it 40? 40? Yeah, 40. Correct. 40. California was what? 40? 53? 54. 54. Jeez. It's a lot. Do you guys, do you, want, do you know enough about the electoral college to explain why we do it that way? Some, a lot of people have been asking, why don't we do the popular vote? Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting question. Man, I feel like I, I could take a swing at that, but I don't know if it would be completely... <laughs> I can't remember. I, I have like an 80% there idea, but to go on record the way explaining bad. the Electoral College... <laughs> yeah. You're not the, you're not the guy I, for I that? Do that. Probably, I bet there's a YouTube video of someone perfectly explaining it. I bet there is. I think is. it was originally created to give better representation to the right. like yeah. different parts of the country, not yeah. just the most populated. because. Mm. Yeah. Group think in mm -hmm. cities right. tended to be like, okay, whatever the city thinks. That goes back, way back. So it was trying to spread to get a more even mm -hmm. distribution of what different parts of the country yeah. think. But it's oftentimes, yeah, somebody will win the, the electoral votes and then lose the popular. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I think last night Trump won the popular vote yes. as well. And, and that's like the first time Ryan, in are you projecting that? a long time <laughs> I'll let you know that that happens for a Republican candidate. Yes. I think yeah, since Bush he, and Al Gore. He, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, Kayla, can you do something real quick for me? Can you Google how many kids live in America? How many kids? Uh huh. Also, I want to see how far back you guys can go with naming okay. the presidential okay. candidates okay. who ran against each other. Oh, should uh, we do that right now while she's googling? Okay. Uh, so 2020. I heard there was uh, a, 2024. SNL did like a funny skit that was like, "Do you remember my name or something?" And it was like, "I'm I was the vice presidential candidate for Hillary Clinton," oh, and everyone's yeah. like, "I don't." What know. was that guy's name? Tim, Tim. Kaine. I oh, only know yeah. that because of that, but it's like so many things. Okay, no VP be. candidates, just presidential Thank candidates. Yeah, okay. of course. Okay, twenty twenty four. Uh, Trump Harris. Twenty twenty. Trump Biden. Twenty sixteen. Trump Clinton. Twenty twelve. Obama, Obama Romney. 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 Two thousand and eight. Obama. Obama. And McCain. Yep. McCain. Two thousand and four. Mm. Bush versus uh, John Kerry. John Correct. Kerry. Uh, 2000 Bush Gore. versus Al Gore correct that, that took months every that day for seventh grade I'd get my mom's Florida. card like did somebody win and she'd be like nope nope sure didn't because of Florida 1996 Clinton versus Dole Bob Dole Bob, Bob Dole, Dole. Yep. great job guys Thanks for stopping there. Yes. <laughs> Clinton in 92. Oh, let's, let's go back Man, to the I don't even know, Clint, I don't even know what Wikipedia has before that. Clinton Did Clinton Bush. beat w, W's dad? Mm -hmm. H.W.? Yeah, because okay. yeah, he was he was four years. And then it was So then H. ADA would have been Bush against, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 huh. I do don't remember know. Ross Perot as the independent for many elections. Oh, a ton of them. Those independents never, they never win. And then before Bush, Reagan was president. <laughs> Reagan. Reagan. For kids in America, mm -hmm. yeah. there's 74 million, so it's okay. like about one in five people. Okay, so here's what I ask. I think <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now- Yeah, tell us why you ask. Yeah. <laughs> the floor is yours. I am going on record to tell you why I asked. Okay. <laughs> Make I a definitive think, statement, man. Yeah, sure. It's just math. <laughs> I think right now the total votes are like at 135 million. Yeah. So 75 million kids that don't vote, that gets over 200 million people- in our country, which is like half half of adults voted. Does that sound right? Wait, say that close, again. Close to half. Yeah. Of adults voted in this election. Okay. Which is which oh. is probably more than normal, which is kind of sad. Normal. Kind of weird. Wild. It's man. sad and it yeah, that's a that's telling yeah. of our of our of our country, right. I guess. But it's also cool to see the increase this year. Let's talk, about your, let's talk about okay. your experience of yeah, this I would process love to. of voting. Yeah. I would love to, man. I put no thought into voting when I was like my first election. Sure. Yeah. Was in college or whatever. Yeah. I put a lot of thought into this and learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And it felt like an actual mm -hmm. real big thing. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like for you guys? Um, I voted early last week. And what, what time? Like 6 a.m. or? <laughs> oh, it was so early. Daylight savings? Before daylight savings. Yeah, before Smart. daylight savings messed everything up. <laughs> Would love to talk about that, by the way. Are we going to, when we win in 28, are we going to do something oh, here about we go. the time change? We Here's are, we our are first going, big announcement. We are going to possibly, possibly. end daylight savings. Yes. Wow. We're just going to end on the one that stays later longer. 
and then just yeah. let it run. And why, why not just stay there? I'd like to but, make a, but another we're, suggestion. We're open to conversation. <laughs> here's, here's Arizona a, doesn't do that, it. That is a great thing about us. <laughs> that's man. why we're open to conversation. Yeah, that's why Arizona that AJ, is yeah. wild about you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. That's what they were all yes. telling me. They were texting me last night. Oh, and yeah. we, like, these guys get it. These guys get it. We and love desert golf to, too. And we're going to try to build the desert golf yes. culture. industry, culture. Yeah, and if I could just say something for all the avid Afterthoughts fans who are panicked about us maybe putting this podcast on the back burner from 2028 oh, until oh, 2036. 2036. Um, we yeah. will continue I've got some to do this. projections for 2032. We will continue to do this <laughs> from yes. the Lincoln from, bedroom. From, yeah, from the White House. For, yeah, every yeah. probably twice a week. All yes. right? Yeah. Talking about all the big issues. Yes. And, yeah. and we are open to conversations about daylight savings. We will have different... <laughs> We will have guests. We will have guests so. on to talk about daylight savings. Yes, and all the other issues uh-huh. that there are. Here's here's just a thought. Okay. Food for thought. An afterthought. If or I will. A forethought, maybe. No, it's an afterthought. Okay. <laughs> uh, this past weekend, we got an extra hour of sleep. Unless you have kids and they still wake up. Blah 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 blah. Uh huh. I got less sleep. Me too. Um, <laughs> very nice for everybody. Everybody enjoys an extra hour of sleep. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever considered just doing that every weekend <laughs> or every day? And then every every day you add an extra hour of sleep. <laughs> so then, like for periods of time, nighttime is daytime, right. or the yeah. You but know, you always get an extra hour to to <laughs> I make have not this full circle. That. Talking about personal agency, <laughs> okay. you also can go to bed an hour early yeah. than normal, and that's actually, and turn off the TV and go to bed. And that's actually another way to mm, get another. That's going to be one of our big talking mm, nope, points. I'm going to need you guys to do this for me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to. The government some, has to. The yeah, only the agency in my life is if the government does this <laughs> yep. for me. That'll be a big talking point for us. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what what was what was it like to vote? <laughs> I feel like I asked that oh, a few so minutes early. ago, and it was before. These I had... guys tried to do a whole episode of like Ethan's not here, so we're not going to banter. And look at them. They yeah, can't. Did help you watch themselves. it? E? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was on vacation. I will probably. Uh, no, you won't. I'll You're going to love it. I'll two x speed it, but it'll uh-huh. change your no. life. I, I heard it was great. Everyone's raving about made, it. Everyone was seriously. People were like, "I was so great." I was like, "Oh boy, wasn't that good?" Though? Maybe I'm taking. You gain an extra hour, and then if you watch that, you will lose that hour. Yeah. <laughs> so then you'll be kind of. So back to even. Yeah, back to even. Half and half. Okay, yeah, I will. So all that to say, what was well, it like voting? I voted early, before coffee, so I don't even remember who I voted for. I was so tired, and uh, well, okay, so we walk in, and um, yeah, that's was, pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> got that part <laughs> and um it was handed the uh it was okay I, i'll say all that to say <laughs> say all what to say <laughs> to sum up <laughs> um, so far you walked in and got the thing to sum up i, I, I say all that to say but by all that he means i voted early and i walked in guys now that i've really painted this picture for you <laughs> Yes, here's what I here's my point. Here's how I'm really gonna land this plane. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so okay. Just, real quick, I have a yeah. funny just take okay. 30 seconds. Because I actually have something really good to say yeah, about this. No, I, bet yeah, sure I, I can tell. <laughs> no, I do. There someone tweeted that a guy got kicked out of a voting booth because when he was each time he'd fill something out, he would just play this through his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, if you don't know, the NFL, NFL draft, draft before they announce he gets Every kicked. time you make a pick. Oh. He would play that and then make oh. his pick. Which means. And they kicked him out. That should, guy is going to be part like of our the... campaign. Yeah, yeah, let's get him he's on. Getting find a job. him. He's in the camp. Kayla, find him. Or you do the. Um, he's going to be the be uh, secretary of pranks. Mm-hmm. I like that the, guy. If you want to be a millionaire. <laughs> That's funny, too. <laughs> but to be clear, like, this guy. Voting is such a personal thing. This guy is just making himself laugh. He's just fun. This isn't like to entertain people. This That's is just for planning. him. Like and he thought that through. And I <laughs> oh, yeah. really respect him. It's like for I'm going to make a whole. I want uh, to find out who that guy is and get him on the, here. Uh, I think we'd yeah. have a great time. <laughs> okay, so what we've learned so far is Doug voted early and then he walked. So he walked in, <laughs> and mm-hmm. the suspense has been building since. I was trying to find the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire oh. soundtrack to. Like that was going through my brain as I'm standing there, yeah, sure, trying to know. I, uh, um, I I got like emotional mm. voting, mm. and I have voted every election since mm. turning 18, and uh, this one just felt I don't know. I was I was uh, very honored 
and I felt the weightiness of it. And I know this is like the media is sort of pushing the narrative of if it goes this way, the world will never be the same as we know it. And if it goes this way, the world will never be the same as you know it. And they make it hyperbolic, but I think there is a lot of truth to this specific election. Mm -hmm. um, when people say nothing's going to change, like it's not going to, I'm like, well, I used to say that. Right. I used to be the guy who said that. I remember voting. It was in between Obama and Romney. And mm -hmm. I kind of like rolled my eyes a little bit at it, thinking nothing's going to change in your life, no matter which one of these guys gets elected mm -hmm. president. But this one, I really felt stewardship of citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I, most of the world and most nations would kill to have an opportunity yeah. to have a, a say right. that we yeah. we think is insignificant, which is why still so many people don't go and vote. Yeah, yeah especially kids. Yeah. <laughs> 75 million kids Millions didn't vote dude. this year. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kinsley didn't even like care last night that uh -huh. the election was on. I was See, explaining it the to problem. her and she just wanted to, she wanted me to read yeah. her Curious George. And I was like, this is ridiculous. We need to pray for that generation. Yeah. yeah. Right side up. Pray for the younger the generation. Option, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> all that to say, to sum up, <laughs> I got emotional. Yeah, and it was uh, it was a it was a powerful moment just mm. for me. I think um, maybe it's now like we we have more leadership in our careers. I feel more responsibility yeah. as a dad, and as a you know, albeit like really small, but like a voice to speak into the next generation mm -hmm. and the future of the world and all of that stuff. And it just really felt like mm -hmm. I took it very serious. Yeah. And I got, it, it was emotional um, casting it and then walking out and getting into my car and I said a little prayer mm -hmm. and uh, just thank God for the opportunity to do that. I felt the yeah. weight, I felt the weight and I've never prayed more for an election mm -hmm. um, than I have in the months leading up to this. Mm -hmm. So that was my experience. What was it like voting knowing next election people will see your name on the ballot? It was wild. I was like, do you think you'll vote for you? <laughs> yes. I will okay. not out of humility. You already got one. Wow. Yes. <laughs> wow, I feel the like last a jerk. first, so. <laughs> I feel like a yeah. Chinese reverse psychology yeah. on God. <laughs> yes, which was Ryan's minor in college, reverse psychology. Major mm -hmm. in psychology. Yeah. It's really. How did you feel? Did you vote early? I voted early. There was a long line, uh, even for early voting. I walked down to... Uh, the the uh, Randalls down the street, and um, I waited for about an hour. Dang! And at first, I was frustrated by that, and then it slowly throughout the course of that hour uh, sank in that that means that a whole bunch of people are voting, um, even though lots of people don't vote. At least the fact that people are showing up to vote uh, really meant a lot mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then the volunteers who were obviously they're completely objective. They're not allowed to like sway in any way, but they were like cheering for first time voters. Mm -hmm. When That's like cool. an 18 year old walked in, they got the whole crowd like That's cheering. Cool. And there was this like everybody that walked out, didn't nobody knows who anybody voted mm -hmm. for and it didn't matter because the the deeper thing going on is that we have the the right to vote and that we're yeah. able to show up and do it. Yeah. And so there was this really cool, like I'm sure half the line was voting one way and half the line was voting the other way, mm -hmm. but there was a, a really cool unity in the fact that that we get to do this and that's that special. We're here doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know your experience, maybe it was because I was in Georgetown, but the volunteers were like the older generation. Yeah. And I could just feel like a- Yeah, uh, man. It, how much it meant to them yeah. and how much history they yeah. have in this nation yeah. of doing this uh, throughout the years and how how much they love seeing me walk in yeah, yeah, as yeah. a 36 year old younger guy mm -hmm. to see me like they were like thank you for coming and voting like yeah. it was yeah. they held it was like you know yeah. maybe yeah. reverence the wrong word but it it like a place of honor like yeah. this is a big deal yeah. and i yeah. could feel it in their countenance and in the in their spirit of mm -hmm. yeah. you're you're not getting paid to be here Right. You're volunteering to be here because you. This means a lot to you, really and our sweet. nation, mm -hmm. you know. And I think even they would say we're. I talked to one guy there. It's like we're, we're king. We're, we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven before we're citizens of the United States of America. Yeah. But God has, for whatever. Like I was born here. You were born here. You yeah. were born here. Right. We were born in the United States of America to be alive in 2024 to mm -hmm. cast a vote like this, mm -hmm. and that does matter to God. 
Not you know, sure. it is a big deal. It's not as big a deal as the kingdom of heaven. Nobody's saying that. Right. But it, right. it, it is still very much a, a very Both big deal. Both of those things can be true. Both of those things can be true. And I felt that yeah. in a, it, it was powerful where yeah. all of a sudden I'm thinking back to all the different leaders of the Old Testament and the journey through it and how much it mattered to God mm-hmm. who was there and who was not. And probably the process and if he was going to be honored versus dishonored and and I was like, okay, so this actually matters to God too. Mm-hmm. It was cool. That's and that, that might seem now. so obvious, but I think there's been such a no, narrative man. recently of as soon as you say anything about being a citizen of the United States, it's like, well, we're, we're citizens of the kingdom yeah. first. It's uh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. No, obviously, uh-huh. uh-huh. and this is a very not, big deal too. Not obvious to every Christian, no. No. I think there's a lot of Christians yeah. that need that reminder. Mm-hmm. It should be obvious. Right. Yes. Agreed. People get so wrapped into American politics and yes. friends, they lose sight of their ultimate citizenship. Yes. Okay. Right. But they put them but, out of order. But right. because of that, it's created this pendulum mm-hmm. where it's like you're either all in on your candidate or yeah. you're all in on the kingdom of heaven and you're going to just completely sideline anything politics. Yes. And I think what, what we're Correct. saying is there's this huge middle ground of when you have the maturity to realize first and foremost, citizen of the kingdom of heaven, then from a stable place, you can a- mm-hmm. approach this conversation of, okay, and also we live here. And so yeah. how are we going to to uh, set up systems so that we can all thrive yeah. together? Yeah, and that's God's process. design. Even the separation of church and state was originally designed to keep the state out of the church, mm. not to keep the church out of the state. mm mm-hmm. That the state must be very influenced by yeah. by the church yeah. and the values of the kingdom of heaven, yeah. which are values that, you know, I mean, right now, the, the I think it's Mark Sayers. I don't know if he made up the quote, but what he says is, everybody wants the kingdom without the king. Right, right. We all want the values of, yes. right, of Christ, and we all want the godly version of that, that's thriving. Work, yeah, all of it. Take care of, the, of yep. yeah, like feed people, give people water, and all of that's great. Correct. But if, if the king's mm. not on the throne of the kingdom, mm-hmm. then we're completely missing that Jesus mm. is Lord. Which is kind of interesting even thinking about other religions that still include Jesus in a way, <laughs> mm-hmm. but not as king. It's like they're yeah. even saying, like, we do want his principles yeah. and what he brought, but we don't, we're not willing to put him on the throne. Right. Yeah, it turns Very out uh, treat people the way you want to be treated is pretty wise across yeah. the board. Exactly. For, yeah. for humans. But the question comes down to, are you willing to make him king? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. If he and if he's on the throne, then you should be able to navigate politics in a way that today you can be okay either way. Doesn't mean your opinions aren't strong. Doesn't mean you may not feel like, man, this was really important and I'm glad it went this way or I'm not. Right. But I'm gonna be okay either way, because yeah. I know who's on the throne. Right, because we don't vote Jesus in every four years. Right. And hope that he lasts for eight years. Right. We're used to a democracy. Yeah. Um, but the kingdom is the king's dominion. Yeah. Mm. The the Constitution starts with we the people. The Bible begins with in the beginning God. Oof. Mm. It's just good. and it's God. Yeah. And we want all the good attributes that come with his good plans yeah. and his blessing and the values of the kingdom, yeah. but we don't want God to be in charge of us. Right. We don't want right. uh-huh. ulti- like yeah. ultimately we want authority over our lives and uh-huh. and you just you don't get your get to have your cake and eat it too. Mm-hmm. And when you realize that ultimate authority in the kingdom, the king's dominion, belongs to Jesus, mm. and you give him authority, and there's reverence, and there's awe, and there's what you say goes, even if I disagree with it, or even if I don't fully understand it, I, in humility, in submitting to your reign yeah. as the king, yeah. then the beautiful thing that you get in return is you start to realize that he is good Mm -hmm. and he doesn't just make you a subject of his kingdom he invites you into the royal family and that's where the agency comes from i've been thinking about this a lot the difference between agency and authority okay because we we do to start back to where this conversation began we have agency and it's important to have personal agency over your domain or your kingdom Mm -hmm. if you will but it's so easy to let that agency turn into a want of authority over the whole thing Mm -hmm. and it's like no that authority belongs to god Mm -hmm. who gives us agency Mm -hmm. as image bearers but i think we get it backwards when we go no i want authority over the entire thing that's where we start making god in our image instead of the other way around Mm -hmm. and so it's such a fine balance here um but what we're what i'm trying to do in my life is wake up and go okay 
all authority belongs to God. And so I'm going to let God be the king and I'm going to submit to that. And then I'm going to realize that he has created me in his image and he's put breath in my lungs and he has work for me to do today. And so I'm going to step into that agency to the best of my ability. But I'm always like just being curious uh, about my own life of where my own personal agency Mm -hmm. is turning into me wanting to have authority to make decisions that are above my pay grade, so to speak. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Well, I, go. Well, I think for some people that maybe don't believe that or operate with that, that's why something like an election can feel so catastrophic. Yeah. Or so like, okay, here's my future, thank God. Mm-hmm. Or I guess not thank God, because I don't believe in God in this scenario. Uh, thank, thank this universe. situation, mm-hmm. the universe. Um, <clears throat> but ever, I think like in the broken human nature is our deep desire for complete autonomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you find out you don't have that, and you don't because God has the authority ultimately. But an right. election can tell, remind you of like you can't control the narrative, one way or the other, right? Right. Um, and we in a country like America get reminded of that less mm-hmm. than other parts of the world that operate more with very little autonomy. I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. going back to the question I asked two hours ago about <laughs> voting. Um, yeah, you guys are going to struggle in Colorado, but you're going to do great in Arizona. <laughs> I was in China, China, as we should say, I China. guess. China, <laughs> yeah. Um, 2015. Okay. So a year before the Hillary and Trump election. Yeah. And it was wild being there, with things like we were in Beijing for a couple of days. There was no pollution, mm. and I'm like, I've always seen that, like the smog here and everything is terrible. Yeah. And some people told us that while we were there, we happened to be there when some like world track and field event was going on. Yeah, okay. So the government put out a decree of, with based off license plates, which days they could drive Mm -hmm. to cut pollution down. So when the world saw on TV, they wouldn't see that. Right. We had dinners, we were there in a Christian context. We had dinners with people who'd been arrested on their way to church, Mm. put in prison for being believers. It was crazy. And so I, coming back from that, I remember that next election, the next year, feeling a lot like, wow, I can't believe that I was born in a place where I get to have a say. Because mm-hmm. I was just in a place where people have no say. Their no government say. controls everything. Yeah. Um, to what you can Google. Like, it was weird being on our phones and we'd be like, oh, I can't search for stuff. Like, yeah. look yeah. at American stuff. I can't yeah. access normal information. Uh huh. Really, really wild. So the last couple of elections, I've felt a lot more gratitude after that experience of being there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I like to vote on election day, which is inefficient, but I just think it's kind of, I woke up and yeah. walked, walked down the street cool. to the place to vote. Yeah. So I go to the parking lot. it's right lot, next to your house, which is cool. Which is convenient. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the parking lot... I walk up and I get in the line and there was a proposition. There was two proposition A's, which by the way, it's like, why don't don't you be proposition B? It's just pretty (laughs) confusing for everyone. Which one is which? It was like Uh, A1 and A2? Yeah, something like that. But this one was- uh, A1A and A1B. This was about a sales, uh, about tax and the firefighting department, EMS kind of thing. Uh Um, And I get in the line and there's a firefighter and he has a sign and he's like, vote against Prop A, like if you Mm. care about your firefighters and literally- from me to you, which is five feet, uh, this other guy in the parking lot's going, vote for Prop A. They're like next to each other. And I look, I turned and looked at them both. And I'm like, whoa, you guys are against each other. And they both kind of laughed. And I was like, well, I appreciate that you're not fighting with each other. Right. And they're both like, we both have our beliefs, but we can both stand here all day today. And they did. They were there when I got back home. Wow. No way. Which was really cool. It was, yeah. and, and then last night, one of our friends was over and I'd say, we probably disagree on some big topics Mm -hmm. and have agreements on others but have some disagreements and i think we both felt like watching election coverage both kind of like like uh she said like i feel kind of anxious about this like Mm -hmm. what the outcome of this and what it's going to look like yeah yeah and by the end of the night we both like we're like hey you know what this was a really good conversation because we kept going back and forth like well what about this what do you think about this and did you know this i didn't know that and it turned into this really cool conversation where I think we, I walked away from yesterday after both those experiences being like, okay, democracy is a really cool thing. Yes. Yeah, and dude. It's, and you maybe on the grand scale, the way the media portrays it, every, they make it so polarized and divisive. Mm-hmm. But in my neighborhood and in my friend circle, 
it actually feels very possible to have really good conversations and to be able to explain like, here's actually why I'd vote this way or what I think about this policy. Here's my heart behind it. Mm -hmm. We can disagree it, but you could understand at the end of the day of why you feel that way. I think that's most people in this country. Yes. Yeah. I think most of us could sit down and have good conversations with each other, but Mm -hmm. it's to take this into a new conversation. I think that the biggest villain in this whole division of our country is the media. Mm. And it really, really like makes me mad now to see the way that it has driven people so far apart from each other and made so much of your identity, your political party, which is why people yeah. won't say who they vote for. Right. Because if you say, I voted for Trump, people are going to assume 10 things about you that aren't true. And if you say I voted for Kamala, they're going to assume 10 things about you that aren't true. But you don't have the time to sit down for three hours and go, here's why I voted the way I did. So you're just afraid that people are going to assume like, oh, you're racist or, oh, you don't care about babies or whatever it is, right? Like, because these these strong opinions are there. And I think the media has caused that. Mm. I think they've made it feel that way in there. And here's my theory. Okay. In the internet age, when the iPhone started coming out and all these different avenues for individuals to become journalists with blogs and social media became a thing. Yeah. the, The outlets lost their integrity of reporting the news Mm. and started to have to fight for clicks. So they all became so polarized so quickly. One of the questions I had- And by the way, you're a broadcast journalism I was in school when this happened. At this, this so you're watching all this play out. I started college in 2007. Mm -hmm. The iPhone came out then. Right. And by the end of those four years, my degree was pretty much obsolete in a lot of the things that I'd learned because everything was changing so rapidly. Mm -hmm. But I've said this before in our conversation, probably on here, I took a journalistic law class and there's most of the things I learned in that class, nobody operates with now. Mm, really? Nobody's abiding by so much of the stuff that they're actually supposed to be held to. And it Was became, there more of like, a, I've used this word a few times in this conversation, but there was more of a reverence for, the, for yeah, that law? Yeah, like, I think it felt like, hey, you're here to report what is happening, not to tell everyone what you think about it, and uh-huh. unless you are in a specific part of journalism where you're an opinion journalist or you're writing an editorial and you get that space. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But the news is here to tell us what's happening, not how individuals that work for those corporations feel. Mm -hmm. And that changed really. I mean, there's probably always been, if you go back, I'm sure there's always been corruption. And back when people could control newspapers, I'm sure there were people that were like, heard this story, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it got on steroids with the internet age. Okay. And all of these news outlets to survive and get advertising dollars they have to prove that people are watching their stuff and listening to it. And everyone became so polarized Whoa. so quickly because they they left telling you what's happening to telling you what they think is happening or what they want you to think mm-hmm. is happening. And then more people, I think, started to put shares and money and stuff into that to go, we can kind of control the narratives here because these outlets are willing to spin stories however we want, yeah. which is why it's fun. Like on election night, I just went to different networks oh, yeah. all through the it's night. my favorite. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you guys have different numbers you're reporting, like different projections yeah. where we oh, know Ryan has yeah. the accurate ones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> Don't you even go get to, me started. <laughs> some of my phone calls last night. <laughs> when it started to become evident that Trump was going to win, you see some networks like Fox is like already calling it. Yeah. And then other networks are scrambling and they're trying to like still spin things and still say the state probably is still going to go Kamala's way. And you can see journalists starting to like kind of lose it a little bit and they're really upset and they're starting to voice some things that you're like, that's Uh not a professional opinion. Like Mm -hmm. you're kind of lowering yourself to just being a mad person or on the other side, like you're kind of celebrating something Uh that some people watching your network probably don't feel the same way about. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think the loss of integrity in journalism has has been the major cause of the division in our country. Did you notice how, I watched this a lot last night, how you break bad news to people is you don't just break it to them. And the metaphor is like, say you're, you're cat sitting for somebody at their house mm. and their cat dies, like their cat got run over by a car. Yeah. You don't just call them and tell them that. You mm-hmm. do it in steps. Yeah. So right. first you text them or call them and be like, your cat's on the roof. What do I do? And then you'd be like, wow. hey, there's, the cat's like really close to the edge. of the, And then you kind of, over a few hours, it's, it leads from your cat is now on the roof to your Uh cat something bad happened and your cat fell off a tree and landed in the road and then got hit by a car it has to slowly crank it up yeah and and i i watched that last night Interesting. like like cnn and msnbc like flipping through a lot of these things just sort of Mm. it 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 took it was a long road Mm -hmm. to even though it was pretty inevitable inevitable and obvious at a certain point yeah it was uh i thought Mm -hmm. I, i think 
That is that's just a human thing to yeah. break yeah. bad news yeah. very slow because yeah. it's a pill you just can't. Mm -hmm. And even people reporting it were like, I can't swallow this pill. I yeah. can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's when that's you, you know, I, there's a documentary about the Sunday at the 2019 Masters when yeah. Tiger Woods, after yeah. an 11-year drought of not winning a single major, 11 years, and it's a Sunday unlike any other, and it's one of the greatest comeback stories in all the sports. Yes. And all the different guys like Jim Nance and uh, I think Vern Ludquist is the guy who is on, he's on the par 3, 16. Uh, he's been there for years. You know, all these guys who, the guy who is producing the Masters, and they're all talking about how we're, we're trying not to root for him. Right. And huh. we're, but even in the truck, as we're producing the Masters on, on par 3, 16, when Tiger... It was about that far. That's and they're right. all like shouting hole in one. He's like, we just can't help yeah. but be, yeah. but have, we're not just reporting this. Right. We are emotionally right. we're human attached beings. to this. And every yes. one of us wants this guy to win the Masters. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, you see less of just reporting facts. And there was so much emotion yeah. last night on both sides that, that also yeah. went into the facts are delivered oh, yeah. through so much opinions and so much emotion. Yeah. A lot of feelings. Which now is interesting because, so you kind of had like social media and individual ability to become a journalist on your phone, start to undo the power of major media outlets right? or force their hand to become more extreme. And now because of that, I think so many people are turned off to that. They're like, I didn't turn this channel on to try to hear what some guy thinks what you're i want to know what's going on right? yeah that people are going to other outlets like podcasts and things for their that was one of the interesting things about this podcast election is podcasts were probably the most influential yeah. part of this oh, yeah. you know that both candidates went on major podcasts right to actually have conversations which i think right. was very very helpful but when you listen to those conversations and i tried to listen to some from each as much mm -hmm. as i could there's so many things that you're like that's not what the media said like, and you, of course, how much can you trust a lot of what politicians say? I don't know. But there's so many times where I was like, well, the media has made that out to be a whole different thing than what, when I hear this person talk about it for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. this, this is what they're actually saying, mm -hmm. right? So long form conversations and the importance seem to be on the rise. It's like, it's like everybody is waking up to the reality that having conversations that are longer than sound bites are super important. And I think the reason is because we're talking about very complicated issues mm -hmm. that can't just have yes or no uh, yeah. answers. And that's really what the two party system is like. You're yeah. over here on this. You're over here on this. And mm -hmm. what these long form conversations like what we're doing right now um, are giving space for is, well, let's get into the nuance of this and let's learn about different perspectives. Yes. And let's see that. Let's realize that we're I'm only one human seeing this complicated thing from one angle. And so, Doug, tell me what you see from over there. And e, you tell right. me what you see from over here. And that's so important. And the debate format does not allow for oh. that. No, it's horrible. It's terrible. You, you're frustrated the whole time because you're like, none of you are answering the questions. No, you're, you're just, just shooting back at each you're other. You're shooting back because this one person kind of answers the first question, but then they say something about the other. And then yeah. that person has to like undo yeah. that and they spend the whole time. It feels like it's like two two high schoolers get in a fight and they go to the principal's office and the principal's like, what happened? And yeah. instead of telling them, they just go back and, well, he's always been oh, like this. And he's always been, so you know, like. I honestly, I do wonder. Totally. Like, I really wonder. So in the last week, uh, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance went on Joe Rogan's podcast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Each of them had a three-hour conversation yes. with Rogan yes. in his studio right. in the same format, sitting in the same chair that so many influential people have sat in yeah. and mm -hmm. have been free to speak their opinion and speak their voice, and you get to know them. And mm -hmm. those two guys did that, mm -hmm. and a lot of people responded to it. I think that yeah. Trump Rogan interview for the first few days was getting 1.4 million views on YouTube an hour. That's that's close like, to this part. That's close to our it's numbers. Close. They man. were almost which there. Is, which is wow. Yeah, and then JD Vance's wasn't too far behind that. Yeah. yeah. And then Elon was on there a couple of days ago, and right. but but what ha like the story goes, uh, Joe wanted Trump and he wanted Kamala mm -hmm. to do the, and he he said. He even said this to Trump. I think he said this to Elon as well. He said, "We, I don't care what we talk about. If she comes onto this podcast, yeah. I just want to talk to her like a human yeah, being. Get to know her. And I just want to get to know her. Yeah. But her, her, uh, her campaign uh, team said, we're only going to do it if you come to us and it's 45 minutes right. long. Yeah. Yeah. And I do wonder, yeah. had she done it, uh -huh. if it would have changed anything? Because here's... 
here's one thing I, I, part of me has felt, has kind of felt for Kamala over the last few months yeah. because I feel like she was put in a position where she can't be authentic. Mm. And so I had no idea who she was. Most people, mm. no idea. We know what your party believes about different policies. Right. But as far as who you are, yes. it was like she was, she was picked by the leaders of the Democratic Party. You're going to be running for president. We're going to switch you out with Biden. And this, these are the policies. Here's what you can say. Here's what you can't say. Yep. Here's the interviews you can do. Here's yes. the interviews you can't do. Yeah. And so here's, whatever. Here's how you deflect this question. Here's the talking point for this right. issue. Yep. Yeah. And whoever Go. you are as a person is not going to come across in those answers simply because of that. That's, yeah, so yeah. I don't think yeah. any of us, I have no idea who she is. And I think a lot of the American people would say, even, even people who are like, they agree with her policies would go, yeah. I still don't really fully know yeah. who she is. The thing about Donald Trump is he can't be managed in well, that that's sense. Why, that's so, why he rose to such popularity because he was so different than politicians. Because you t hear a politician yeah. talk and they'll, mm -hmm. you, by the end of it, you're like, I don't really know who you are, right? Right. But he's so different than that. He's polarizing Very. because of his personality. Yep. But you you know what he thinks. But you know and he who will he say is. It. You know and people who he latched is. onto that, which speaks, and that's such a, authenticity is such a value now. Mm -hmm. And it felt like, okay, like, I don't like all the stuff maybe this guy's saying, but he's at least, I at least know what he thinks about this. And I mm -hmm. think that yeah. has been a lot of the reason for his success because it stands out in what feels so scripted huh. and so many things that you're like, well, you said the opposite yesterday and I don't really even know what you are, who you are and what you actually think about any of this. And there's no trust there with politicians. Right, yeah. And there was something about the, uh, like like him or not, you know who he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that just wasn't true yeah. for the Democratic side. It's like, I don't, I think there was a lack of trust at yeah. the end of the day. Like, I, I don't trust what's happening here. Mm. It all seems to be scripted. It's, uh, is there something, is somebody hiding something? Is Is there a secret agenda going on? Is there... Um, I don't know. It was, but on his side, it was, he's going to just, just tell, tell you. you and he, it's like, he can't be managed. Yeah, he can't which, be managed yeah. by a political team who says, say right. these things don't and don't say, say these things. Even if himself. he had managers who were like, don't go on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's going to be like, well, I'm going to just do what right. I want to do. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to say what I want to say. Yeah. And that stood out yeah. in the yeah. world of politics, which, man. which however people might feel about Donald Trump. I think it does speak to the value and hopefully there will be more authenticity in the future in elections and conversations and how we learn about candidates. Because for example, the when J.D. Vance got announced to be vice president, I didn't know anything about him. Right. And the first couple of things you see are of course, some of it's like very negative, like he once said this and he's this way. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to a couple of podcasts he was on and I don't agree with everything that he said or his policy, some of his policies. I agree with a lot of the things he said as well, but- by the end of it, I was like, I would have lunch with this dude. Absolutely. Talk football with this guy. Yes. Talk about parenting. Talk about uh -huh. life. Like he politically, whatever, we can agree and disagree, but he seems like a normal person after exactly. listening to him talk for three hours. Yeah. I think we'd get more of that with all politicians yeah. if they did more stuff like that. And if I there agree. was more of an ability to just be authentic with the American people. And I think that's what people want. I agree. Yeah. And it, you know, with Kamala, it was just, you hear kind of the same answers and the same words in the exact same order. Mm. on all the interviews right. and yeah and i think well and that was the she went on a couple podcasts but it was very it was catered to her and maybe that's their strategy but i think a lot of people are turned off to that where it's I, like i've already I heard agree. all this give me something that's different or new or going to help me feel like i yeah, trust yeah, yeah. you but it, but the long form conversation yeah. the reason i i like so appreciated joe rogan's sort of the environment he created was he's not trying to do like a gotcha thing no you know yeah. like even yeah. kamala would go on this and it's like we're going to trap her Trump would go right, on this, so right. like we're gonna get him, uh -huh. and he he's just we might disagree on some stuff, right. but this is not about trapping somebody, right? This is not about gotcha journalism. Yes, this is not. This is just an honest conversation about policies yeah. and opinions, and to most importantly, get to know you. Well, the, and that's like, that's it. The bold thing that Kamala did was go on that Fox News interview. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that guy was just ready to like fight. Yeah, he's interrupting dude. her right away and stuff, and I'm like, dude. Gosh. Obviously, you guys very much disagree and you don't want her to be president, but this is like it's have a productive. conversation. We're not getting but, anywhere. You know, and that, yeah. you don't know, get that. But like, have, yeah, have a conversation. Which is still like debate format almost. It was. It you was a I mean? debate. Right. Yeah. Which goes back to now, I think a lot of people ask, like, where do I get my news from and how do I find out stuff? It feels very hard to, uh, but a lot of people have turned to podcasts and 
social yeah. media and things to just kind of see like who's on the ground there that can actually just tell me what's going on because these I don't trust any of these media outlets. Why'd you point to the afterthought sign when you said <laughs> that? I meant I pointed out that way to oh, Washington okay. oh, DC. Yeah. Well, that's where Washington is. <laughs> yeah. Now when you guys run in 2028, <laughs> what are you gonna do to to fix this journalism problem? Uh there I mean uh, there legitimately needs to be some <laughs> regulation on media outlets and how the, I don't know I don't know how the inner workings of that are because there's very rich people that own networks. Yeah. So they can kind of tell their employees what to do and hire the people that are going well, to say what they want them to well, say. Well, when you say regulation, that, what do you mean? Like if there were some laws in place or there was infractions that people would actually, there are, but they actually like would get in trouble for. And the government, or I don't know, I guess our presidency would go <laughs> after these media outlets when they're, they like, everyone's like fake news has become such a like, oh, I'll oh, say that gotcha. about everything. But there yeah. is that. There yeah. is a lot of misinformation out there. There is, but it's, not just people on Facebook that are that you knew in high school that are saying crazy stuff about a vaccine or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's major news outlets that are spinning things or even just telling lies mm -hmm. to push their agendas. And so I don't know how you enforce that, but we're going to figure it out in the next four <laughs> years before we go we and actually will. do it. We will figure it I out. Would, I would passionately pursue getting back to integrity in journalism because that is, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. And now what it's made it feel like <laughs> is the... America is a reality TV show that the rest of the world just watches and has to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. this yeah. is crazy. Like if if you just think about the past election season, yeah, you had a candidate drop out because mm. he was starting to become incoherent and unable to like be the president. Yeah, yeah. And a and two assassination <clears throat> attempts. Yeah, dude. A political candidate then thrown in. Right. Without any process uh-huh no primary mm -hmm. and then she's got to just suddenly like okay i did not expect this now i'm gonna go run for president right. like mm -hmm. this whole thing was crazy yeah when you watch that first debate with trump and biden imagine being an snl skit writer watching that debate you oh, go yeah. this is the snl skit. Right. <laughs> this is what do i what do we do it is to currently make saturday hyperbolic night. <laughs> yeah. and more ridiculous like we yeah. are watching <laughs> the this snl is... skit in this debate they did it they're arguing about their golf yeah. 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 like they exactly. did it for us so and, yeah. and now like even celebrity involvement, like I texted my brother and it was like 25 years ago, if someone was like Kid Rock and Hulk Hogan are going to open yeah. up for Donald Trump, who's running for president, yeah. which I at that time would have known him from being in Home Alone 2. Mm -hmm. right. A writer would be like, that's unrealistic. Like yeah. there's no mm -hmm. way that happens. You know, this has yeah. been or, so or crazy. Taylor Swift is going to persuade this many people yeah, Taylor to, in her yeah. case, vote for Kamala. Uh -huh. It's like Taylor Swift makes amazing music <laughs> she's phenomenal but why though is it we we want to know yeah what man she, she has such a voice of authority yes. when it comes to politics and how yeah. to how the world operates and she's been around the block and has a lot i'm sure wisdom and has lived a lot of life yeah. and is a great artist uh-huh but it, it's so much weight is given to celebrity now right uh-huh to whatever you do i'm gonna do yeah whatever you say must because you can write a hit song. Yeah. And well, I'm, that's, I'm, that's, she can write a hit song, man. I'm not saying anything about that. Hey, yeah. I'm do just you like, think she can write a hit song or not? I, no. I think she can write a hit song. Doug, Doug is on the record Taylor saying Swift. Taylor Swift can write a song, <laughs> maybe isn't the best person to go do to politics. I, for politics, yeah, I don't listen to a lot of Taylor Swift anymore, but... Oh, because not you're a 36 year old man? <laughs> but, yeah, probably. <laughs> I bet that's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I probably. agree. But it, but it is. It does feel like it's just... And the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Course. And then you've got so <laughs> that's you've how got I need to get him. Taylor Swift and Elon Musk, uh huh, two like maybe two most powerful people that can yeah. sway opinion in the world. Yeah. I guess yeah. like it's just really really strange. But to everyone who's like, yeah, this is such a mess and whatever. I think the blame on that goes back to the politicians who created this that never built trust with people, and play this ping pong game where they just go back and forth yeah. and they get in office and undo their policies and try to start theirs and they don't have enough time to actually see those to fruition. The next party comes back. It makes the American people like, give me something different. Mm -hmm. We have people like Elon Musk who are helping figure out how we could go live on Mars. Yeah. But it could take Arizona weeks to count ballots. Exactly. Somebody explain that to me. It's like a Scantron from college that you just, <laughs> right. like, here's your grade. Right. That, yeah, how like is Spotify that? Spotify knows uh, to the number, the exact amount of times. Let's give Taylor Swift another shout out. <laughs> Blank Space by T-Swift, which is a phenomenal song, <laughs> has been streamed. Yeah. It knows to the exact number yeah, right yeah, yeah. now. How, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's one song on yeah. one app. 
how you're right like how does arizona yesterday morning they're going it's going to be two or three weeks before we even get an accurate number i said i think arizona just wants attention yeah. they just want everyone to be like oh yeah remember yeah. arizona we should go to scottsdale sometime <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's ridiculous that is so any but yeah, there's a lot of government inefficiencies mm -hmm. right like the dmv and stuff they're like hey so we're we can go to space but we can't get this better help me out here yeah, which is another big thing for us. We're government efficiency is a big issue for Doug and I. When Ian and Doug get elected, <laughs> make the election America efficient again. <laughs> yes, yeah. Election results will be in within the hour of polls closing. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's the. Plan. Are we ready to stand I, on that? I mean, within yeah. an hour, I think we should Ryan. release that statement. Let's yeah. just do it. I mean, we will be, Yolo, we will dude, be we'll doing this out. conversation on Mars <laughs> while that election with Elon is Musk happening. and Taylor Swift. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd love, to, I'd love to sit down. See if you can get them on our podcast too, because we'll I would like to actually find out which one of them knows more about politics. So let's see if we can get them both on the. Same if they can episode. both come in on the same day, great. If not, we can stagger it. That's fine too. Are you finishing a thought? And even me saying, I would love to have a conversation with both. It's like, whoa, no, duh. Like, well, with Elon Musk. Musk or Taylor Swift, yeah, both would, probably very bright people. I wouldn't like who to have a lot to of Taylor stories Swift to tell at all. You wouldn't because I hate her boyfriend. <laughs> I oh, want no, yeah. I, I want nothing to do with them. And what it has if mostly to just do with football? What if you knew Travis Kelsey wasn't going to come up? <laughs> all right, then I probably would. Then you talk to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. But me how too. could he not? She's going to ask about Steph. It'd be rude for me to not be like, "What about you? Are you in a relationship?" <laughs> yeah, do you have a boyfriend or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> His brother just crushed somebody's cell phone. This guy, this Wait, really? fan yelled uh, really? a, a slur about Travis Kelsey to him. Okay. And Jason Kelsey went back and took the guy's phone out of his hand and threw it on the ground. <laughs> Which he apologized for, of course. Uh -huh. and he has to because he's on TV. <laughs> right. It was kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> was that at College Game Day? Uh, uh -huh. It was, Yeah. It was on the, he was at, I can't remember which game. I think it might've been. I watched the Ohio him. State, yeah, Penn yeah, State yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. He was just walking and this dude just yells something about Travis. And he just, <laughs> anyway, that has nothing to do with oh. what we're talking about. But. <laughs> oh my god. You gosh. were saying something about Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you no, this. No, no, I'm talking about like the, uh, the freedom of speech and the, the first oh, amendment. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I asked you when you say, when you say regulating, is, when you say if regulating. nothing else, I hope that this helps people to just take a deep breath and laugh a little bit on yeah. a, such a big day of where everyone's yeah, so yeah, tense. Yeah. yeah. Having some fun talking about this. Yeah, exactly. Tell us about man. the first amendment is free well, speech. Well, that's why I was asking you like, what do you mean when you say regulating mm -hmm. yeah. the media? Okay, that's because, a good question. Because good question. that, I mean, and I'm not, this is not my opinion. This is just facts. That was happening with social media. Like Zuckerberg since has come out and talked Admitted about it. Facebook yes. and how he was very much pressured mm. to yeah. say this and not say this. And that like Elon, when he purchased Twitter and released all the Twitter files, it's so obvious. You can say this narrative, you can't say this narrative. Yeah. Yeah. And so that becomes regulated to the point where um, somebody is actually yeah. controlling the story yeah, yeah, yeah. that the world hears, which is why I'm like, when, you know, I, I laughed at the start of the Rogan Musk conversation where Rogan just casually said, thanks for buying Twitter, man. And I was <laughs> so like, casual. Oh, for billions for of dollars. Billion yeah, dollar yeah, no purchase. problem, man. I, uh, it was just a, a Wednesday afternoon and I was like, what am I going to do with these billions of dollars? Right. I'll just buy Twitter and do something to help the First yeah. Amendment today. Yeah, yeah. So, but okay, truly, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. I would say when I mean regulation of those major news media outlets, it's almost like regulating their regulation. It's regulating their Got censorship. It. Yeah, yeah. It's regulating and holding them to a standard of unbiased journalism to tell people what's happening. Mm -hmm. So then they can form an opinion about it and they can go listen to what people they went to high school with think about on social media and all that. Yeah. But not to just be another place that you go to hear a bunch of people's opinions. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what all it's become. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. So. Yep. W let me ask you this. What's the. But only for four more years. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna buy all social media, all of it. Because I think when you become president, you get all the money. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you just have the treasury just print you money. Yep, guys, we need you to print us two billion dollars. Paychecks today. are actually the president giving File, you your we're allowance. Gonna print. We're gonna buy Mars from <laughs> <Unknown>. Elon. <laughs> yes, yes. We're in negotiations for Mars. Who owns Mars, by the way? How do you figure that out? God owns Mars, Doug. Ooh. You, I was a trick question, Mar and you, you nailed it. <laughs> Mars is the Lord's and everything in it. Yep. It's like when so that's, when, but that is a good question. Yeah, it is. How will that happen if people go there? Like, who's gets to just, is it just like, who gets their first, first come, says, first serve? Yeah. yeah, I guess that's how yeah. that's yeah. this country. That, well, kind, not really. <laughs> yeah, that's how a lot of the world allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. 
Let's get it's into it. It's such a really messy story, isn't it? This the whole, whole thing. thing is so messy, yes. man. Uh-huh. It's a really messy thing. I just, okay. I want to ask you guys this, and I'll start with giving my answer to it. Okay. okay. What's the hardest wait, thing? Wait, wait, wait. Start with your answer, and then <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll try to decide the question. <laughs> I just feel like it's so frustrating <laughs> to not be able to just say something and not have people immediately go, oh my gosh, I don't like you anymore. You must think this. You must think yeah. this. Yeah. And I don't want to go to your church anymore. Right. Yeah. To say like, Something as simple as that. Yes, and it's yeah. so polarized. That's what's the hardest thing for me as a pastor. Yep. What about you guys? You asking what the hardest part be about being a pastor <laughs> is right now? In the midst of politics. Being a pastor that has to deal with politics. Because we've yeah. had people that really want us to harp on certain things. Oh, yeah. We've had people that, you know, like everyone yeah. wants their opinion Here's, or okay. agenda set. Yes. Uh -huh. And I have a lot of opinions and things I think. I want to keep the kingdom first uh -huh. and keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like we live in a time where you, and we probably said things on this podcast. There's going to be people from our church that are upset about, but yeah. to just be able to be a human being that has right. opinions about things feels so impossible right now. Yeah. Without having like saying something and then having a friend like reach out two days ago and be like, that's inappropriate that you guys use that platform to say this is like i barely said something <laughs> yeah, I, know. I barely said something but because have you to... you have alluded to like i like elon musk people will make things they'll think certain things about you yes some of them true some of them not and probably most of them not it's so frustrating it, it's yeah. it's very frustrating dude mm -hmm. um yeah i feel you know when paul says like i'm in i'm a i'm a slave to the gospel now like i'm in bondage to the main thing to Jesus. And and this can be a good thing. And in times like this, it's a very, it's a very infuriating, frustrating thing as well, where we now lead an organization that is based on the gospel. Mm -hmm. We're pastors at a church. And the metaphor I often use and I tell people in meetings when they ask questions about it, I think is helpful. So I'll say it, is we are we're captaining a cruise ship full of people, full of souls trying to pastor them, mm -hmm. trying to keep the main thing, the main thing for everybody, yeah. which is Christ crucified yeah. and resurrected and getting that, that is the life-changing message. Yeah. Yes. Above and beyond anything else, that's all is important. It does not take the same authority or the same tier or the same chair as Christ Jesus crucified and resurrected. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're not just on a speedboat anymore. I don't, I don't have my own jet ski right. where I can post what I want to post and I can make quick turns and I can, uh, a lot of people who would criticize, I'll just say it to our circumstance, who would criticize us. I'm like, well, you're riding your own jet ski. You're on a speedboat yeah. with like eight people and yeah. they all agree with you. Yeah. And we, the beautiful part about Red Rocks Church is it's a lot of different opinions right. and a lot of people with a lot of backstories yeah. who all share in common the main things. That's right. And things are so polarizing and, and so, uh, I don't know what the, like the temperature is so heated yeah. where if I say Elon Musk mm. might know more about a certain topic than Taylor Swift, all of a sudden it's like a lot of people on our cruise ship yeah. forget the main thing now because huh. the captain said this. Mm. And so then I now do a disservice to the gospel yeah. and I don't get everybody that's on this ship to to know you just need Jesus way more than you need a certain president yeah. and way more than this policy as important as it is, you need the main thing. Um, I feel like we are, we've are we been given a, a, a cruise ship full of souls to steward and get from A to B. Yeah. And if we have to go slower because yeah. of it so that we can get everybody there, yeah. and if we can't turn as fast as a, as a speedboat or a jet ski, it's because the context is very, very different. Mm. And so at times I feel like almost handcuffed to that mm -hmm. where yeah. I have so many thoughts and I, sometimes I get envious of other podcasts because they can just yeah. say it. And there's so many times where I just wanna, I wanna just say it because I'm not really afraid of, of what people will say. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of uh, what Jesus might think if, if, okay, that just cost, that could have potentially cost salvations Right. Because yeah. you guys stood for a, t a policy. Right, right. And that is not a good trade. Mm. And this is eternal. And this, although important, is temporary. Mm. So there's a weightiness to it where I feel backed into a corner a lot and yeah. kind of just having to, you know, and when people reach out and, and you know, how people sometimes who say, have a backbone and talk about this. And I go, you have no idea how easy it would be to talk about that for me. Yeah. I have so many sermon series and think like I, I, a lot of 
I'm good at explaining things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I can explain a lot of this stuff and mm -hmm. I think do a really good job, but it might cost one person to mm -hmm. walk away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. I sit in that tension every single day. Every yeah. day, man. And so I don't know, every day. I'm not trying to make that sound more dramatic than it is, but truly over the last few years, mm -hmm. I think since we started this church in 2019, everything about our political landscape and our culture has heated up <laughs> oh, yeah. and become that. We've had to, ev every major topic that pastors usually get years <laughs> at a time to, <laughs> before you have to figure out how to pastor people through that, Okay, now you have another five-year gap before now uh, it's going to be this war or this topic mm -hmm. or even me right now saying topic instead of the actual thing because people will right. hear me say abortion or racism or and then, whoa, mm -hmm. he just said like, right. what, do you, what do you mean when you said that, right. pastor? Right, yeah. It's no, I'm, I, I'm a human being who has thoughts and opinions about the world. Sure. And, but I'm, but, and I'm a pastor. Yeah. And I'm, we're, we're, ca we're captains of a large cruise ship now. Mm -hmm of a lot of people with different beliefs when it comes to second, third, fourth, and fifth tier stuff. And yeah. we're trying to make sure people keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important thing to do in this season. And yeah. I still believe that's true, but man, is it, it's hard. It's incredible. That was hard. a long answer, but that's how that's I feel. Answer. That was a great answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would just amen that. I, I mean, I think a good example of that was last week we posted a clip of you just telling people to go vote. Yeah. And within 20 minutes, we had to turn off the comments. Correct. Yeah. And we were on the phone like, no, we're going to leave it up because it's important to tell people to go vote. Yeah. That's that's like the least polarizing thing in the world yeah. to say go vote. But I I remember this moment when I was in second grade and our teacher had to leave the room for like two minutes to go talk to another teacher and we felt, man, as she was like getting ready to leave, we were crumpling up our papers <laughs> like it was going to be game on. And as soon as she walked out, we just started throwing papers back and forth. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel like social media is when we, mm -hmm. as soon as we just make a statement yeah. about voting, mm -hmm. everyone's like, this is my time to jump into the comments yes. and say something polarizing. Yes. And it's like, guys, just just let's take a breath and have a, a civilized conversation uh, mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Um, and so th those deeper conversations that I know, I just know we need to be able to have mm -hmm. as a community and as a nation and as the world are becoming increasingly difficult because people just want to lob grenades at each other from, yeah. from mm -hmm. the other side. And it's harder when you have a, like people want everything said from the stage, but that's not always a conversation. Right. Or not going to be heard truly what you mean. Right. People are just going to hear what they think you're saying or what they right. want to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I do appreciate patience, I feel like, from a lot of our church for yeah. the fact that we're navigating yeah. I agree. this. Yeah. I agree. Um, since we started this church, we've had a pandemic. Yeah. Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. uh, racial reckoning of America, mm -hmm. a contested election. The woke movement. The woke LGBTQ movement. LGBTQ stuff. There's been so many things going on. Mm -hmm. And wars. they're all important. Yeah, two oh, yeah. huge wars going on in the world. Yep. Um, with religious uh -huh. ties into the Middle East and all uh -huh. that going on. And we're in our 30s trying to navigate and figure out how to not just feel about a lot of these things, but then communicate that. And yeah, I have a correct. lot of individual conversations with people about yes. this stuff to help navigate, like, here's why this side thinks this and this side thinks this. And yeah. biblically, here's what I can tell you. And I think hopefully we'll be able to navigate and do more of that mm -hmm. um, in the future. And and yet to keep the main thing, the main thing yeah, and not forfeit the chance for people to know Jesus yeah. out of a uh, knee-jerk reaction to have to speak to an issue. That, for me, has been the most uh, freeing thing about not being on social media. Mm -hmm. In 2020, I was on social media, and every, I felt like I constantly had to say something yeah. and have an opinion, and sometimes I didn't know what to say. Right. Um, it was or I'm forming an opinion, because I'm mm -hmm. a human being that don't I don't have everything figured out. And not everything's black and white and right. easy. And some people make it out to be that, um, but it's not. I just don't feel that pressure now. That's great. Um, and I think that's a healthy thing because it causes you to sit and just think about mm -hmm. things more and then not have to voice about everything. Yeah. So all that to say, I appreciate patience from our church as we're yeah. navigating a lot of this stuff yeah, and trying I to figure agree. out the most um, kingdom way to talk about things that are important. Correct. And go about issues like that. Correct. Um, that matter to people. Yeah. And I hope, uh, 
I hope for an era coming and maybe I, regardless of what you voted for yesterday, I'm praying, man, for our leadership and the the culture and the temperature of our nation for the next four years that there's been a real spirit of control that you can't walk across the street and just have a conversation with your yeah. neighbor. Yeah. And I really hope that lifts yeah. and that we can, um, you know, yeah. as a, as a pastor, a lot of people, you know, in like, they, they're like, what do you have to say? And I want to know what you have to say. And if what I have to say is not what you want to hear, you're going to, because I represent the church to you. Mm-hmm. My words have a different weight right. than if I didn't have this job. Yeah. Especially right now when there's a spirit of control yeah. operating within all of this. Yep. And I agree. Patience from our church, I very much appreciate that as well. We are in our early 30s planting this thing during the craziest, most polarizing, yeah. at least in our history, but a lot of people would say just yeah. in, in the U.S. history. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, you go back to Civil War time, obviously. You go back to, okay, but let's just say the last, you know, yeah. 80 years, like in our history, yeah, yeah, yeah. the most polarizing by far. And we've had to figure out how to, mm-hmm. how to pastor and wrestle with those. Like when people say, why haven't you talked about this topic? I mm-hmm. go, you have no idea how much time I think every day about that question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How and much you have no I idea how, many, how much I have do. talked about that topic oh, right. in meetings oh, and conversations. All the time. Oh, behind closed doors. Yeah. For sure. Just not on social media. Right. And, um, but, uh, but to thank our church, like I remember Matt Chandler saying, you guys are going to get me in my fifties and sixties. Thank you for putting up with me when I was in my early thirties. Yeah. And thank That's you funny. for giving me time to become funny. the pastor I am now. Yeah. And you guys get me now with yeah. all that experience and more wisdom. Mm. And I love that. And you, and thank you for putting up with me. You know, he would even say all of his sermons before 06, they took him down because he was so fiery yeah. and hot headed and, Thought he was like doing the right thing and he would look those. back. I know oh, yeah. for real. And I, I, I think the same thing though. I like, I want our people in this cruise ship. Yeah. Um, I think the best is in front of us for yes. Red Rocks Church. Yeah. And where we're going is, I want to be like, as your leaders. Yeah. I, I think you're going to get us in our best in the decades to come. So I good, agree. man. And thank you for, uh, thank you for, not just showing up, but inviting and praying and giving to this thing when yeah. you know you have young leaders who this is their first time ever doing this yeah. and you have our backs. Yep. And even though we're obviously imperfect. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for that too. That was well said. Yeah. Um, one last practical thing for people today, wherever, however you're feeling. Yeah. And this will sound cliche, but spend some time listening to the voice that actually matters. Yeah. yeah. Because... Immediately this morning, I hopped around to different news outlets and some are going to sell you on like, everything's going to be fixed now. And you'll be frustrated over the next four years because everything won't get fixed. It never does. There's going to be, Trump is going to say things that are going to frustrate you. There's going to be policies that you may disagree with. There's going to be promises that probably aren't kept because every president does that. Right. And then hopefully a lot of things are good and there's some improvement on some things or some new things. But on the other side, like CNN's website, this is the headline. Mm Mm-hmm. Trump's projected victory hands the president-elect massive disruptive influence at home and will send shockwaves around the world. Wh- and I just read why? that and I'm like, that is, that is like that's what the, that's doing that's is making people feel afraid. That's the that problem. is creating the shockwave around the world. So there's going to be a <laughs> that, lie. That is that stuff. <laughs> right. That's what does it. There's going to be a, <laughs> yes. uh, there's going to be a boosting of either side of like, this is the greatest thing ever and we're yeah. going to fix the world or it's going to be like, we're, this is, it's over. Yeah. So pack up your stuff and get in a bunker because the world's ending. And I would just say, listen to the voice that matters today. Get in, yeah. get in the word. Spend some time in prayer and Agreed. just remember who the king is who's on the throne. And uh, we have a kingdom far beyond America. And we just have to learn how to operate within it as Christians and get back to some of the stuff we talked about today. And that is, I do feel hopeful as well walking away from this election because yesterday I sat and had a three-hour conversation with someone Mm. with disagreements and agreements. And we both walked away like, okay, I understand a little more of this and a little more of this. And I think we could do a whole lot more of that. And we'll do more of that on this podcast and continue to try to help pastor and lead people to ultimately keep the main thing the main thing and be human beings that love each other uh, more than our policies and politics. I feel like there's so many moments in the Gospels where the disciples and other people are freaking out and Jesus is just completely at peace. 
Mm. And it, mm -hmm. the more the older I get, the more I'm like, yeah, that's because he understood the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, he understood there was something bigger going on beneath the surface of what you see. And so never forget that. And the last thing I'll say is uh, I just got some numbers in. Oh yes, <laughs> for uh, 2028, you guys are actually trending in the right direction in Seriously? Colorado so, already. No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And so it's Bold, not over in Colorado. Bird, and they want Boulder, some buffs in the White House. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> well, we'd appreciate yep. your vote. And, they're they're uh, trying to pay us a lot of money to get a buffalo on there somewhere. <laughs> but we're thinking about it. There's some uh, yeah, licensing issues, but we're probably going to do it. Yeah. Um, we have. Uh, I think. Coach Prime is going to be at our first rally, which is mm -hmm. exciting. It's going to be mm -hmm. at Folsom in Boulder. So we're going back there. That's going to be great. Do some fun stuff here in Austin. Um, and if anybody knows how you run for president, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a URL, I guess, to like fill out an application or something. Yeah. yeah. I've got a pen right here. And if anybody wants to be a reference for us. <laughs> we need, I think we, we need, need three, three references. We do, yeah. <laughs> we already have our resumes ready. Um, yeah. Will you... Hey... You're really good at standing in the tension. Yeah. I think you should pray. Yeah. Uh, pray for our nation. Pray for new leadership. Um, pray for media. Pray for the church. Pray for pastors. Pray for congregants. Pray for yeah. unity. Yeah. Unity. Yeah. All of that. I think that would be uh, just a prayer blessing. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Father, we uh, all come be before you today. And um, we first and, and foremost just, just fall at your, your feet and we say, um, Lord, as things continue to, to change and things continue to, to move in our country, um, Lord, our, our prayer has always been, um, would your kingdom come in Austin as it is in heaven, in the United States as it is in heaven, in this world as it is in heaven. Um, we thank you that you are our father, that you are in charge that you are a loving God um, who isn't done with us yet. And we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would give a peace that transcends all understanding to our entire nation. Lord, would you meet the people who woke up this morning feeling really uh, devastated, uh, really anxious, really worried. Um, meet them where they're at. Lord, remind them that they have agency over their home, that they still have agency over um, their their lives, over the decisions that they make today. And Lord, I, I pray that you would give them a, uh, a refilling of your spirit and motivation to go out and, and create the world that they want to live in. And Lord, for the ones who woke up uh, feeling excited this morning, um, like Ethan said, Lord, we pray for, for them for a, a reminder of the, the humility that this has always been about the kingdom of heaven first and that we would trust you before we, we trust any anybody else, any leaders. Um, Lord, we pray for uh, unity in our nation. I pray for so many more conversations like this to be happening today and this week. Lord, for conversations um, where people are able to share their perspective in a way where judgment and stones aren't immediately cast at them. And so create that space, Lord, pockets of peace. And uh, we pray um, for, for uh, no violence. Mm -hmm. We pray for, um, yeah, just uh, civil conversations as we move forward. Lord, we thank you um, for this nation. And uh, Lord, we ask that you continue to give us all courage um, to take steps forward and, and step into the future that you are calling us to create in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, I thought of one thing I'm grateful for. One more thing, the cruise ship analogy. Yeah. So, uh, Thanksgiving preview. What are you thinking? I guess. For? I guess so. <laughs> Someone get the turkey. But, but the, can't uh, wait for that. a lot of churches, and I'm not saying this is wrong, you know, Colossians 4, Paul says, fulfill your ministry. So every church is given a different ministry to fulfill, totally. even though we all say, we all share the same main thing. We all major on Christ crucified and resurrected. But it's like, okay, that, that yacht or that boat, Everybody votes the same. Everybody votes the same. And it's so much easier mm -hmm. to talk about any sort of policy or topic on our cruise ship. So many people vote different. I'm so grateful for it. And dude. I think it makes us better. I'm so it's grateful harder, for it. It's harder to navigate seasons like this, but it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful mosaic, I think, mm -hmm. of different backgrounds and different kinds of people and mm -hmm. 
different opinions and different worldviews, and it makes all of us sharper. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm just grateful for that. Yeah. Even though it's it's right trying to figure out how to navigate is harder, yeah. but it makes us better. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Last thing, if you need some, take your eyes off politics for a second. A couple things to celebrate. We baptized 230 people this past weekend. Yeah, it's awesome. So whatever's happening in the world, God is on the move. That's very cool. This weekend, we're going to start into Kingdom Builders and get to share a lot more cool stories of stuff that we yeah. got to do as a church this year. So don't miss that. And next week, Alan Graham, who founded Mobile Loaves and Fishes, Community yeah. First Village, um, was on the Joe Rogan podcast recently, which was incredible. Cool. This dude is a legend in Austin and is an example of somebody who saw a problem mm -hmm. and rather than point it out or wait for somebody else to do something, he has created an incredible solution and organization and he's going to be here with us to talk about it. So get ready for that and uh, vote for us 2028. Let's go. <laughs> Early ballots are out. <laughs>